Hello, Mrs. H here. We are going to be looking at the kidney's role in excretion and homeostasis. At GCSE, we learned that the kidneys have two main roles. One is the removal of a waste product called urea from the blood. Now, urea is made by the liver when it converts excess amino acids into ammonia, which is then converted into urea. So we need to remove this urea from the blood. And the other role of the kidney is osmoregulation, which is the balancing of the water concentration in the blood. So here are the two kidneys. These are ureters that carry the waste from the kidney to the bladder and then out of the bladder via the urethra. This is a cross section of the kidney with the renal artery taking oxygenated blood into the kidney. But this blood, even though it's full of oxygen, is full of urea and that urea needs to be removed. This is the renal vein, so that enables blood to be taken away from the kidney and back to the heart. And somewhere in the kidney, the urea gets removed and then emptied into this structure leading at the top of the ureter and then down to the bladder. The little structures inside the kidneys are called nephrons and there are about a million of these in each kidney. Let's have a look at a nephron a bit closer. Blood enters the kidney via the renal artery which will branch into smaller and smaller arteries which will eventually lead into a nephron. Blood will flow into this ball of capillaries, which are, uh, as all capillaries are, one cell thick. So substances can pass between the gaps of the capillary walls. Small substances such as water, urea, glucose, salts and amino acids are pushed out of these capillaries under high pressure. Bigger substances such as blood cells and proteins remain in the capillaries that wrap themselves around the rest of the nephron. This network or ball of capillaries is called a glomerulus. The process of smaller substances being pushed out here and into the nephron is called ultrafiltration. Now these substances, the filtrate, will now move through the nephron, so they've been pushed out of the blood, they're in this nephron and into this first coiled tubule. Here, there are actually special channels for glucose and amino acids to move through so that they can diffuse back into the blood along with some water. Urea doesn't move back into the blood, so it stays in the nephron. Enabling glucose and amino acids back into the blood is what's known as selective reabsorption. So the rest of these substances will then continue to move through the nephron to the collecting duct and towards the ureter and the bladder. So what we've still got here in this fluid are some salts, lots of urea and water. So they're still there. Now at the collecting duct, this is the last opportunity for water to move back into the blood before being eliminated as waste along with the urea, which makes up the urine. The more permeable the collecting duct, the more water can move out and back into the blood. And of course, when water moves in the body through cells, it's called osmosis, isn't it? So more osmosis will happen if the collecting duct is more permeable. The less permeable the collecting duct, the less water will be able to move back out and into the blood by osmosis which means less will be reabsorbed, meaning more water will be lost in the urine, along with urea, um, which we need to get rid of. Now there's a hormone called ADH, which stands for antidiuretic hormone. You don't need to remember that, so we'll just call it ADH. Now this increases the permeability of the collecting duct. More ADH, more permeable the collecting duct, the more water is reabsorbed back into the blood by osmosis. ADH is secreted by the pituitary gland and is a hormone that targets the cells of the collecting duct in the nephrons of the kidney. And it is actually the hypothalamus found 
above the pituitary gland that detects this change in water concentration of the blood and the hypothalamus is what stimulates the pituitary gland to make or secrete more or less ADH depending on the water concentration in the blood. So let me show you how it works. It is important that there is a normal water concentration in the blood because if there was too much then our cells would burst. If there was too little then our cells will shrivel up. So very important to maintain that constant normal concentration of water in the blood. So we're going to work through this flow chart together. If there's a decrease in water concentration in your blood this might be because you haven't drunk enough or you've been exercising and sweating, then this decrease in water concentration is detected by the hypothalamus in the brain. The hypothalamus has lots of different receptors, um, some of which are sensitive at detecting water concentration in the blood. They're actually called osmoreceptors, if you'd like to know. The hypothalamus detects the decrease of water in the blood and will send an impulse to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland secretes a hormone called ADH. ADH targets the collecting duct of the nephron and makes it more permeable. More water is reabsorbed into the blood by osmosis, leaving concentrated urine going to the bladder. So that's going to be a very dark colour as there's not much water in the urine. And don't forget, the urine is also containing the waste product urea that we want to get rid of. If there is an increase in the water concentration of the blood, the hypothalamus detects this and sends impulses to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland secretes less of the hormone ADH. So if there's less ADH to target the collecting duct, the collecting duct will become less permeable, less water will be reabsorbed by osmosis into the blood, which means more water will end up leaving the kidney and the nephron. So there will be more water in the urine and the urine will be quite dilute. Now this process is an example of homeostasis by negative feedback. So as the water concentration in the blood increases, the response to ADH decreases it back to normal. If the water concentration in the blood decreases, then the response to less ADH means that the water concentration increases back to normal again. That is all for now. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.